Aries suns and Aries risings, this is your forecast for the upcoming Jupiter Saturn square, uh, which is going to happen actually twice. The first time is going to be in mid August, and then it's going to happen again in mid September. And uh, yeah, it's one of the important transits of this year because it involves outer planets or kind of like slower moving planets to be more precise. And what is that for you? Well, uh, Jupiter is transiting your Gemini third house, which means that ever since Jupiter entered that area of your sky, uh, there have been a lot of developments uh, when it comes to education, to putting out content, to writing, communicating. You've been involved with a lot of email exchanges. You've been involved in the organization of something. Um, you've been involved uh, you've been put at the center of some sort of community project and so you are kind of the going person that goes to all the people and makes sure the the organization and the arrangements go well um also uh you may be uh just uh, really focused on writing some sort of business proposal project proposal writing your thesis as well writing some sort of um a business plan uh some sort of a detailed financial budget or something like that uh you could be uh, really uh, taking your education seriously and reading a lot of books or uh, a lot of manuals, uh, taking a lot of short courses in order to upskill yourself. Uh, and this could be in order for you to transition to a new job, to prepare for a new project, or uh, just to um, kind of like a, to, to try and um, uh, perhaps uh, kind of out compete someone else for in your company for, for a project or something like that. Um, also, you could be the one working on producing content in the sense that you could be the teacher in the situation where you're the one writing the, the manual, you're the one uh, writing the detailed explanation, the, detail, the detailed guidelines about something. You could be also involved in import-export, um, but the, the point here is that ever since Jupiter entered that third house, which happened in the end of May, there has been a lot of developments there, a lot of coming and going. and um, Somewhere in this one year during which Jupiter is going to be there, you are very likely to receive some sort of gift, some sort of uh, major opportunity to learn something, to get some sort of new qualification, to sign a new import-export deal, uh, to expand your mind, to organize something. Um, and uh, as Jupiter is doing that, as Jupiter is working on that, it's going to hit the square to Saturn um, in the sign of Pisces which is your 12th house that has to do with uh, our blind spot, the things, the people in our lives, the developments that take place uh, on the fringes of our attention. We may not at all know these people or um, it's somebody, you know, somebody in the office that you meet in the hallway, but you don't really know them, you don't really talk to them. Um, it could be a, a development that's happening in, in, uh, in your company, let's say, and you don't really know about it, you haven't really heard about it. Uh, or you have heard about it, but you thought, oh, that has nothing to do with me. And so in a sense, you fail to appreciate the impact that this could have on you and you underestimate it. And so it, it kind of qualifies as a blind spot as well. Uh, and this basically means with the Saturn Jupiter square, uh, there are two ways that this can play out. So um, the growth that you're experiencing when it comes to your mental energies and your mental capacities, the information that you're able to intake and then uh, process in some way and the, the, the skills, information, knowledge, output that you're able to produce. With this, the square to Saturn, they're coming to, to a halt and they're being stopped by a development that's happening kind of behind the scenes without your uh, full knowledge. In a sense, somebody comes from behind the scenes or from behind your back and they stole um, the progress the developments that are taking place that are helping you to expand your mind and expand your horizons and learn more. Um, and the other way that this can play out is that um, Saturn is associated with results and with the rewards that we reap from hard work. And so uh, with Jupiter squaring Saturn, it's very likely that um, all of these developments and this growth that you have experienced in your third house is now taking some sort of material shape. In a sense, what you have achieved, what you have been able to gain up until this point is solidifying and it's becoming solidly yours. It's becoming a solid achievement, but further progress may be stalled. And in a sense, you reap the rewards at this point, but you also lose something. And what you lose is the possibility for further growth. Again, because of developments that are happening uh, on the fringes of your attention. 
Taurus suns and Taurus risings, this is your forecast for one of the big events happening this year and this is the Saturn Jupiter square taking place twice this year, first in mid-August and then uh, in mid-December. And for you, uh, this is going to be about uh, you and other people and shared resources and uh, value systems. So Jupiter in the end of May entered your second house. This is placing a lot of focus and introducing into your life a lot of developments when it comes to finances uh, and also values. So uh, there are a lot of developments regarding the money that you get and also the way that you spend them. There is a lot of movement there. You are uh, gaining a lot of new uh, income streams or you are gaining a lot of new expenditures in a sense that let's say you're developing a new interest for something, especially with Jupiter. Uh, you want to learn something, you want to publish something, you want to run a marketing campaign. Um, you want to spend a little bit more and more Jupiterian things or uh, you just want to uh, you, you kind of, there are things that you've always wanted to have or what always wanted to do, experiences that expand your uh, horizon in your mind that you've always wanted to try, but you never really had the money or you never really had the resources to afford that, but now you can and um, you are kind of involved in these things and also potentially in calculating and recalculating your budget. So what is it that I can afford? How far can I go when it comes to expenditure? And... Um, with Jupiter in your second house for about a year, it's very likely that you're going to get some sort of a large financial gift uh, in some shape or form. You're going to uh, be able to earn more than what you uh, thought you, you will. Um, and that doesn't always happen, by the way, in very straightforward ways, because sometimes you can, like for example, sometimes you can get a one-off payment uh, but that one-off payment may be uh, because you are dissolving some sort of contractual relationship. So it, it, you kind of lose something in order to get money or something like that. It, it's not always that straightforward as if one day you wake up and you find uh, on the doorstep just like a, a pile of cash. But at any rate, uh, a very strong potential for you to gain something materially. And it doesn't have to be money, by the way. Uh, it could be like a very valuable, lucrative educational subscription or... Um, some some uh, kind of like a, you can win um, like a ticket for for a, for a long uh, for some sort of long distance trip uh, or something like that. Like for example, uh, somebody a colleague from work won um, a competition or kind of like a program where they can go to the other side of the globe for one week long exchange professional. Uh, but then something happens, they can't go. And so they can basically assign to you that reward. And so you end up with this large, it's not a financial gift, but it is kind of like a resource, kind of like an opportunity. And again, it's also very Jupiterian. So like you get to go, that kind of thing. Um, so that's going to materialize at some point during this one year of transit. But with the square to Saturn, which is in your 11th house of uh, groups, networks, alliances, industry partners, uh, professional networks, uh, NGOs, lobbying groups, trade unions, um, political parties, lobbying groups, I think I already mentioned that. Uh, the groups of people with whom you practice a shared hobby, like a golf club or something like that. Um, all sorts of uh, situations where, where you are or somebody else is a street leader, a leader of the masses, but it's a little bit informal and it's a little bit counter the establishment. And um, it seems with this transit in mid-August and then again in mid-December that you are um, fighting with these people regarding resources. They want more of your resources. You don't want to give it. They want you to invest in some way. You don't want to invest there. Uh, they see value in something, but you don't see a value in something. That kind of, uh, of dynamic. And the other way that this can play out is that whatever Jupiter is doing in your, um, in your uh, second house, with that square to Saturn, the planet of results, the planet of reaping rewards of hard work, uh, now is the time that you actually see the fruits of that. And the, so you're getting something material and tangible out of it. Uh, that reward is materializing, but at the same time, further growth is kind of stalled. Uh, and so there is a bit of an exchange where you get something now, you manage to solidify some sort of success, some sort of reward, some sort of gain, but uh, you cannot really progress further. 
And on a different note, this could be about value systems. And so you could be at odds with the people uh, in your groups and networks when it comes to values and, and um, what is it that you place focus on, what is important for you. Um, and with Jupiter there especially, it could be about uh, what is morally right, what is morally correct to do. And uh, with the square to Saturn, it's possible that you reach this point where you realize that you want to part ways with a certain group of people um, because you don't see an eye to eye uh, when it comes to, uh, to your value systems and what is it that you uh, find truly worthy of your time and resources and your energy and your days on this planet. Gemini suns and Gemini risings, this is your forecast for one of the most important transits of this year. This is the upcoming Jupiter Saturn square, which for you is happening between your first house of self and your 10th house of career, public image and reputation. You are pretty much the star of this transit, so listen up. Uh, Jupiter entered your first house in the end of May, it's gonna stay there for a year and so ever since that happened you've been experiencing personal growth, growth in your um, sense of self-worth, growth in how you feel about yourself, growth in uh, your horizons, expanding your horizons, learning more, uh, engaging with more people, being out and about in a big world, traveling, um, education, conferences, academic matters, um, also spirituality, philosophy, religion as well. You could be engaging with universities, with mentors as well. Um, and uh, that's going to go on for about one year while Jupiter is in your first house. But uh, in the mid uh, in mid August this year, as well as in uh, mid December, Jupiter will hit a square to Saturn in your Pisces tenth house of career, public image, reputation, and relationships with management. This basically means that two things can happen. Um, your personal growth when it comes to expanding horizons, learning, knowing more things, uh, expanding globally and internationally, dealing with global international partners, audiences, dealing with academia, with publishing, just everything and everyone that helps you expand your mind and horizons and gain more experience of the uh, wild big world. There is somebody in your work, very likely a manager, who is stalling that. Uh, in a sense, uh, for example, um, they're giving you more work, they are promoting you, technically that's also possible, but this promotion is uh, foresees you taking on more responsibilities and being busier, having to be responsible for a lot of things that you didn't used to be responsible for, and it comes uh, with a higher pay but it also comes with um, kind of um, more work and more responsibilities and so all of these developments new projects new deadlines new responsibilities um, all of this is uh, taking away from your time or from other um, possibilities for you to grow to expand to learn more to be out and about to travel to educate yourself uh, to form connections with mentors as well, to meet mentors, to meet other people who can guide you and, and help you upgrade yourself. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is, um, remember Saturn is a planet that reaps the rewards of, uh, of uh, tangible efforts. So if you have been working hard on, uh, on something and postponing immediate rewards for the sake of a larger win further down the line, Saturn is the planet that's going to bring you the rewards. And with this uh, square to Jupiter, it's very likely that um, all of these efforts and opportunities that you've had uh, to grow yourself and to expand your horizons are now bearing some sort of tangible fruit. Uh, you're seeing a material expression of all of these results. However, further growth is denied and kind of forestalled. So you are getting something now, you are definitely ticking a, a box and you're definitely uh, surpassing some sort of milestone in your career, in your growth as a professional. However, um, uh, further growth will be more challenging and kind of uh, potentially jeopardized um, after this square. And another possibility is also uh, with Jupiter in your first house, you could be getting pregnant and so this could lead you to uh, having to uh, drop your career or at least to leave the company permanently or temporarily, go on a, on a maternity leave or something like that. That's also a possibility. 
um, with this square and you might just be in the early stages of that so you are just finding out the news and uh, making the arrangements but you're not necessarily right here right now leaving the company that could happen during the second square um, in December but at any rate things are headed in that direction where because of uh, an upcoming child <laughs> Uh, you have to experience some sort of delay setbacks and potentially a, a very serious uh, block and a timeout uh, when it comes to building your career and also a little bit of cold air <laughs> in your relationships with management as well. That's also a possibility. Cancer suns and cancer risings. This is your forecast for one of the most important transits of this year and this is the Saturn Jupiter square which is going to take place twice once in mid-August and then also once again in mid-December. For you this uh, square is happening across your 12th and your 9th houses. In the end of May Jupiter entered your Gemini 12th house which means that there are a lot of developments that are happening in your blind spot. Um, there are a lot of developments at work, uh, on the fringes of your attention. Uh, things are happening quite rapidly and a lot of minor developments are taking place on a day-to-day -day basis but you're not really aware of them and so with Jupiter it's very likely that something is cooking behind the scenes which will eventually be rather positive for you but um, it's also uh, a bit of a surprise and it would require some sort of uh, quick reaction and, and quick uh, um, adaptation to new um, facts on the ground. Um, and as Jupiter is doing that, uh, it is going to hit a square to Saturn in your ninth house. This means that uh, while you are um, potentially looking elsewhere and not necessarily uh, keeping an eye on the development, um, something is happening that will uh, prevent whatever plans you have uh, with respect to a long distance journey, with respect to education, to a mentorship, to a publishing or marketing deal, something like that. Um, it's very likely that there's something coming out of nowhere, something a little bit unexpected, a development that uh, didn't seem like it's going to be a big issue, but all of a sudden now it is becoming a big issue. Potentially there could be a hidden enemy as well. Um, and uh, somebody or something ends up standing in the way of whatever plans you had for your own personal growth in terms of education, traveling, philosophy, religion, uh, um, academic matters as well. Uh, when it comes to uh, opportunities for you to grow as a person, to learn more about the world, um, these are now kind of um, being forestalled in some way because of developments behind the scenes that you weren't aware of or because somebody uh, you kind of didn't really you, you underestimated or you kind of didn't judge their personality very well and how they're going to react uh, the square can roughly speaking play out in two ways uh, this could be about um, again an ending as I described but it is also a possibility that um, something that is uh, growing behind the scenes and something that is developing underneath the surface of your life is now taking kind of a more tangible form and shape and uh, going forward uh, it's kind of alerting you to its existence it becomes known it takes the Saturn it takes the material shape and you become aware of it and so uh, that's kind of the positive way in which this can play out in a sense that whatever is cooking behind the scenes is now um, is now kind of uh, coming a little bit more visible and making itself a little bit more known. So it's not completely hidden. But then again, um, because of that person or because of that development, still unexpected things can happen. So it doesn't have to be the end of surprises, but some sort of the some part of the developments is coming to the surface and it's becoming known, especially uh, in the realm of uh, education, long distance travel, knowledge, learning, university matters, academic matters, publishing journals, conferences, uh, speaking engagements, that kind of thing. With Jupiter in your 12th house, you may have decided to spend more time alone, more time at home, more time secluded, where you can engage in more spiritual practices. And with the square to Saturn, it feels like um, global matters, intellectual matters are calling you and kind of um, asking you to get out of your hermit zone and return to a kind of active life uh, and to engage with, um, with people from different cultures, from different lands to uh, 
contact uh, mentors as well to work on a more uh, tangible form of education uh, rather than kind of uh, stay secluded and kind of uh, rest uh, behind the scenes. That's also possible. Uh, for example, if you wanted to take some time off and kind of live a more low-key life, um, now developments, there are opportunities uh, kind of coming your way uh, for um, some sort of um, to complete some sort of education degree, publishing deal, marketing campaign, uh, possibly also a legal matter to be resolved as well. Uh, and so this is asking you to kind of uh, come out of your hidden place uh, and become more engaged uh, with life. Leo suns and Leo risings, in this video we are going over one of the most interesting transits this year and this is the Saturn Jupiter square taking place twice this year. The first time is in mid-August, the second time is in mid-December. And it happens across your 11th and 8th houses. Uh, Jupiter entered your uh, 11th house in the end of May, bringing into your life a lot of new people and introducing you to new circles, specifically when it comes to um, foreigners. Uh, specifically when it comes to educational professionals, people from the academia, potentially mentors as well, uh, people coming from all sorts of cultural backgrounds, potentially culture practitioners as well, possibly lawyers as well, or professors um, or publishers. Uh, but you're being introduced to more such circles, people from such circles are more and more starting to kind of come into your field of vision. It's also possible that there are a lot of new developments uh, happening uh, in your groups, networks and alliances. If you're engaged with some sort of NGOs, some sort of communities, some sort of uh, political parties, lobbying groups, or that kind of organizations, uh, trade unions as well, students' unions, um, there may be a lot of new developments there, a lot of opportunities. And so throughout the one year that Jupiter is going to be there, you're going to probably get one very significant kind of gift and kind of opportunity uh, from your engagement with these communities. You may uh, be on the lookout for new communities to join and you might be just in a kind of like an exploratory phase where uh, you're kind of just checking out different communities to see where you vibe. Uh, but as a result of that, you end up getting to know a little bit about different communities and kind of mixing and mingling with a lot of people. The 11th house is a social house with Jupiter there. Uh, you're very, very social. <laughs> very, very social time. But there is an upcoming square to Saturn in your 8th house of shared resources and shared finances, which means that um, it is possible that you end up at odds with the people around you in terms of business partners, industry partners, communities you're a part of, uh, people who work in the same ecosystem, people who work in the same business field. Uh, if you are in the field of uh, fashion, for example, then other fashion professionals, other fashion companies, people who work the same work and produce the same things that you produce, but also people who just work in the same industry, but like not necessarily do the exact same thing that you do. Um, it's very likely that you experience conflicts with these people that eventually lead to the dissolution of some sort of financial partnership or at least very serious difficulties in that uh, financial partnership uh, if you uh, have joined resources material or other or just tangible resources with somebody uh, in order to fight for something to achieve some sort of uh, change in society it's very likely that you that this relationship and this the financial aspect of this partnership enters some sort of turbulent phase with this square the Jupiter and Saturn there are two roughly speaking, two possibilities, two ways that this can play out. One of them is that um, the growth that you're experiencing when it comes to communities, all of the people that you happen to know and just the expansion of your social circle is stalled because of developments with regard to joint finances. Uh, and the other way that, is th that this can play out is that um, there's something very tangible coming together uh, in the realm of, um, of shared resources and shared finances because of all of the expansion and work and kind of like out and about socializing that you've done ever since uh, end of May. So uh, the positive way in which this can play out is that you can finally get some sort of tangible uh, result because you want to remember that Saturn uh, is a planet that helps you reap the rewards of hard work. 
uh, they're not the kind of rewards that feel kind of like rewards that's kind of like oh I woke up and this was like waiting for me and it's like a, a Ferrari <laughs> not that kind of rewards but rather the the logical reward that you get after you've done all the hard work and, and, and put up with all the, the the obstacles on your way and so it's possible that because of a lot of developments that have been happening in your social circle people coming people going people joining you going exploring learning about different people the way that they do business the way that um, they think about different things the way that they want to change the world that they the way that they fight uh, for uh, what they believe is right um, all of this is uh, leading to you finally being able to solidify some sort of, uh, of uh, reward that you've been really hard working on when it comes to shared resources and shared finances. So it is possible that basically as part of your mingling with social groups, you finally find people who to help you kind of um, to, 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 to help you in the form of financial partnership or to help you um, set aside some money or set up a a saving account or or something like this but kind of like they help you they join resources with you um, in order to achieve something Virgo suns and Virgo risings Jupiter Saturn square happening across your seventh and tenth houses this is quite important for you because it involves angular houses this is one of the most important transits this year uh, and it's gonna take place twice once in mid-august and once in mid-december and uh, for you it's about partnerships in business so uh, Jupiter entered your uh, Gemini 10th house in the end of May and ever since that happened there have been uh, a lot of developments um, in your 10th house of career public image reputation potentially new managers as well uh, you have been given new opportunities to be more public to be more visible to like speaking engagements to step up to the plate and kind of uh, take a more prominent role at work also potentially there's been a new manager probably a jupiterian person with a strong jupiterian signature um, an opportunity for you to kind of uh, raise up to the next level in your professional game and it could be something related to a global expansion foreign lands foreign cultures uh, participation in some sort of academic uh, foreign uh, conference publishing academia uh, academic matters uh, joining hands with academia collaborating with academia or something like that but within the context of whatever it is that you do um, there have been a lot of developments that are kind of pushing you towards a position of more visibility and there's an upcoming square to Saturn in your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one partnerships and alliances this basically can play out in two ways first of all um, all of that development and, and expansion opportunities for growth not all of them are going to materialize but some of them will and so the, the sum total when the transit of Jupiter through your 10th house is over you will see that you have indeed uh, gained opportunities for more visibility professionally and publicly uh, in the form of speaking engagements books um, engagements with uh, with universities that kind of thing um, and so all of these developments are now being stalled by developments in one-on-one -on -one partnerships and alliances in a sense a business partner or a personal partner but somebody who is very important in your life somebody with whom you have a personal one-on-one -on -one connection within a private or a business setting um, is kind of hitting the brakes and uh, stalling your growth it could be intentional but it could also be non-intentional in the sense that there could be some developments in the life of a partner that eventually prevent you from uh, doing what you planned to do career-wise in order to um, kind of develop and grow as a person and the other way that this can play out is that um, all of these um, developments that are happening in your 10th house all of these opportunities that are coming and going and some of them are materializing uh, they are leading to the uh, solidification or an ending of some kind when it comes to a partnership so because of all of these opportunities for you to grow to expand a partner is leaving uh, for some reason somehow these things these two things are connected or the possibility is that a partnership grows more uh, sober and kind of more serious and more um, mature more adult-like or there is some sort of a little bit of cold air and a little bit of cold breeze uh, coming into the into the relationship and into the partnership because of um, these opportunities for growth and expansion for example they're not distributed equally or um, 
like a partner is complaining that you are paying too much attention to that and not enough attention to them um, or something like that. But these opportunities for growth that, you, that are coming your way uh, career-wise are at odds um, with the direction uh, in which your relationship is going. Uh, and they're leading to kind of more frosty relationship or outright to an ending um, or um, kind of um, they're calling for uh, partner responsibilities to be better defined and kind of uh, more clearly outlined if this is about a business partnership. Libra suns and Libra risings, this is your forecast for the upcoming Saturn Jupiter square happening across your sixth and your ninth houses. This is one of the more interesting transits this year uh, and it's happening actually twice, first in mid-August and then in mid-December. Jupiter entered your uh, ninth house in the end of um, uh, in the end of May and uh, Jupiter is associated with all of the things with which the ninth house is associated so you have like a double ninth house signature going on which means uh, you are definitely already but for sure within the one year within Jupiter within which Jupiter is going to be in the sign of Gemini you're getting an opportunity to be published an opportunity to travel long distance to participate in some sort of long distance uh, academic program learning program an opportunity to get some sort of really solid education and solid qualification, an opportunity to finally sit down and write your thesis and get that degree, uh, an opportunity to settle a court case, an opportunity to get involved with academia, publishing, marketing campaign possibly, uh, to design, execute and implement a successful marketing campaign. Um, and also this is a very potent transit for you to uh, learn more about foreign lands, foreign cultures, uh, to meet a lot of foreigners, especially foreigners from, let's say, other continents and, and cultures that are really, really different. So we're not talking about somebody from a nearby country, we're talking about somebody from a very different cultural domain. Um, and a very good opportunity for you to, to meet um, a kind of a very meaningful mentor somebody who can really guide you in academic matters, in spirituality, religion, uh, philosophy, that kind, of, uh, that kind of matters, but also uh, just when it comes to, uh, let's say, global, the global expansion side of a business or something like that, you can also meet somebody uh, very significant in that regard. And we reach mid-August and Jupiter hits a square to Saturn in your sixth house, which can basically mean two things. Um, First of all, the possibility is that developments at work in your 9 to 5 office job or health developments are preventing you from fully enjoying, uh, from fully profiting from uh, Jupiter in your ninth house, from all of these opportunities that, that could be coming your way and could be materializing for you over the course of the next one year. With Saturn there, you are asked to work more, you're suddenly swamped in a lot of work, or a colleague is leaving and now you have to fill in for them and kind of take on their work until replacement uh, comes. Um, or there are some intrigues and like problems with your colleagues and co-workers that require you to take on more work and go over and do and redo things and it's just putting a lot of burden on you and so all of these things that you want to do when it comes to publishing education um marketing campaigns, traveling, learning about different lands, different cultures, learning about, for example, what is your, uh, whatever business field you are in, learning about what people in that same business field in another part of the world are doing or something like that. Uh, now is, that's kind of becoming more and more difficult because you are asked to work more and to kind of focus on different things in a nine to five office job setting. That's one possibility. And the other possibility is that um, all of this learning, all of this expansion of the mind that has been going in your ninth house um, since end of May uh, is now leading to some sort of um, a very solid, sober and mature development when it comes to your nine to five office job. In other words, um, you've been working there with Saturn uh, transiting since March last year. Uh, you've been working hard to achieve some sort of results, to achieve some sort of uh, reputation, some sort of stability, to achieve something, to create a portfolio, to uh, really working hard on your resume in order to make you more employable in a 9-to-5 office job kind of setting. Um, and uh, all of this night house activity that has been going on since the end of May is now helping you to finally see some sort of solid outcome 
when it comes to uh, whatever it is that Saturn in your sixth house is doing. So that's the more positive way in which this can play out. In a sense, you are getting uh, some sort of tangible expression of whatever it is that Jupiter has been uh, working on. So you, the expansion of your mind, of your knowledge, of your contacts, of your learning is uh, bringing to a tangible positive result in your um, in your um, sixth house. However, it is also at the moment in which there, this um, result is materializing and the gift is kind of falling in your lap. Um, not out of nowhere, it's falling there because you've been doing the hard work. But at the moment that this is happening, further growth is also forestalled and kind of, um, uh, kind of this is, is, it creates the impression that this is as far as it can get. Um, that this is kind of the trade-off that you are making. Scorpio suns and Scorpio rising, this is your forecast for one of the more notable transits this year. This is the Saturn-Jupiter square happening across the signs of Gemini and Pisces happening across your fifth house and your eighth house. Uh, this is a transit that uh, will happen twice this year. First, uh, it's taking place in mid-August and the second time is happening in mid-December. Uh, so this is something that we will revisit and by the way both times are not exactly the same but we're going to talk about that when we get to the second uh, hit. Uh, and uh, for you this is all about shared resources, shared finances and uh, children or uh, projects or your own business, your own work of art. So Jupiter entered your Gemini um, 8 house in the end of May and so over the course of the next one year it's definitely going to bring you some sort of um, kind of a large gift uh, but it's not always that straightforward in the sense that the 8th house has to do with larger one-off payments but very often these are uh, this is money that comes your way after or in the course of some sort of crisis for example this is about insurances uh, but then something needs to get damaged for you to get the insurance um, uh, this is about some sort of large compensation money but then again there has to be an ending of a work contract for you to get a compensation and that kind of thing so you are getting some sort of a big tax return or big tax something or big insurance or big risk associated money um, however um, uh, again, they, they come out of some sort of a difficult and crisis and unexpected situation. Uh, that's kind of what Jupiter in the 8th house means in general. Uh, but then there's going to be also the hit to um, Saturn in your 5th house. And this basically means, and it can play out in two ways, one positive and one negative. Uh, on the negative side, there is a possibility that uh, developments with respect to crisis money or the joint bank account that you have with a partner business or personal uh, is uh, the developments that are happening there, the developments that are happening with your partner's money and with your joint uh, resources are not very positive and as a result of that you are unable to pay for something related to your child or to put down an investment and implement some sort of project. Uh, so in, in a professional capacity this could be about a partner not having the money to pull off a project, uh, not having the money to back um, some sort of uh, creative endeavor to back to invest in your own business or something like that um, could be happening and um, another way in which this can play out is that um, all of these developments that are happening when it comes to shared resources and shared finances are leading to you finally seeing um, a solidifying of your efforts to build your own business or um, uh, kind of uh, um, an opportunity for you to see some sort of tangible results and to kind of check a box and hit an important mark when it comes to um, to your own business, your own work of art um, or a child, something that you've wanted to uh, kind of pay for um, for a child. Also the fifth house has to do with light romance and so it is possible that a light romance starts to get colder <laughs> Uh, and maybe even end because of differences in uh, how you want to manage and share um, your resources. 
Sagittarius suns and Sagittarius risings. This is your forecast for one of the more notable transits this year and this is a Saturn Jupiter square taking place across the signs of Gemini and Pisces. For you this hits angular houses and so you're one of the more affected signs. Um, and so uh, Jupiter entered your Gemini 7th house in the end of May bringing in new partners uh, or new fresh developments with partners. With Jupiter in your 7th house your one-on-one -on -one partnerships are going well. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity for growth, for expansion, for you to meet people from foreign lands, foreign cultures, to meet mentors, to meet legal advisors, uh, to meet people who know a little bit more about what it is that you want to do, know a little bit more about where you want to go. In a sense, people that are coming back from where you're going and so you can kind of profit from their knowledge. Um, and it feels a little bit like you have partners who are keeping your back. Uh, and they are talking positive things about you, they are recommending your services, they are praising your work, and things are going well. Uh, but comes mid-August, and then we're going to have this transit again in mid-December, in mid-December, uh, and Jupiter hits A square to Saturn in your fourth house of home, family, and living situation, uh, which means that uh, as a partnership is growing and is developing well and uh, is expanding your horizons and it's um, bringing you optimism about the world and about yourself. Uh, there is something happening in your home, in your uh, family and living situation that is uh, kind of hitting the brake on that partnership and hitting the brake on that expansion. Uh, there could be some developments with your family of origin, could be some development with uh, the family that you created. Uh, it could be some development also with uh, property matter, uh, with the building where you live or with, uh, with the, the city where you live or something like that. Uh, but whatever these developments and these uh, kind of uh, more practical considerations and kind of stagnation is hitting the brakes on that partnership that uh, up until this point has seemed very rosy. Uh, and on a different note, of course, it is possible that um, this positive uh, development when it comes to partnership, it could be one specific person, uh, it could be a, a plethora, if that was the right word, uh, of people, but one of them very significant, um, that are coming into your life and kind of making you feel better about yourself and supporting you. Um, but it could be also that they are um, finally helping with the solidifying of some sort of um, um, situation that some sort of achievement, some sort of result that you've really wanted to achieve uh, or when it comes to your home, family and living situation. In most basic terms, you could finally find somebody uh, in, in a partner willing to come and help you fix something around the house that you've wanted to fix for a while or something like that. And it is also possible that um, a development with a partner, business or professional, is leading to some sort of, uh, of ending to take place um, in your home, family and living situation. Could be someone helping you um, relocate to a new place or uh, somebody helping you um, just um, find a new place, a new real estate agent or something like that. Capricorn Suns and Capricorn Risings, this is your forecast for one of the more notable transits this year, which is the Saturn Jupiter square taking place across the signs of Gemini and Pisces, in your case taking place across your third and your sixth houses. This transit will take place twice, once in mid-August and once in mid-December. And uh, what is that all about for you? Well, Jupiter entered your Gemini 6th house uh, in late May and ever since that happened has been bringing a lot of developments, mostly positive, uh, in your house of day-to-day -day work as well as health. So uh, there has been a more upbeat environment with your colleagues and co-workers. You have been given new colleagues and co-workers that are more likable. Um, there is a kind of more positive work atmosphere perhaps because uh, there is a very interesting project maybe you are working with more people from academia, from publishing, from uh, people working in marketing campaigns as well, uh, the legal field as well, uh, or foreigners. You, might ha uh, you may have um, kind of like a more international team or maybe you've changed jobs and entered a place where the team is more international. Uh, and there have been a lot of developments there. Um, uh, since uh, Jupiter's ingress in, uh, in late May, 
but uh, in mid-August Jupiter is going to hit a square to Saturn which means that um, very likely uh, this upbeat mood, these positive relationships that you have developed with your colleagues and co-workers uh, are going to uh, kind of um, reach a turning point that feels a little bit cold and a little bit sober uh, because of uh, some work that requires research or writing a business plan or writing a business proposal or um, some sort of educational content that you're working on preparing to put out guidelines, manuals, things like that, um, or because of uh, your own attempts to kind of upskill and reskill yourself. Um, and the other way that this can play out is that um, your colleagues and co-workers, your 9-to-5 office job may involve some sort of international project, something related to publishing, to um, marketing, and this is requiring you to put in a lot of hard work when it comes to uh, acquiring some sort of new skill. There is also a possibility that your growth professionally in a 9-to-5 office job setting is forestalled by developments that are happening in your neighborhood or commuting or something related to import-export or something related to your extended family. Developments there are somehow forestalling your um, efforts to grow in, in, uh, in your day-to-day -day job. Alternatively, it's also possible that some sort of uh, developments in your health that uh, are mostly positive, but not necessarily only, only positive, but some developments with regard to your health are uh, putting pressure and tension on your relationship with your extended family. Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings, this is your forecast for the upcoming Jupiter-Saturn square, which is one of the more notable uh, transits this year. Um, and it's happening twice. It's happening first in mid-August and then again in uh, December. And it's important for you because it's involving your ruling planet Saturn currently transiting your second house of resources. Um, and so uh, this square, Saturn-Jupiter square, is happening across the signs of Pisces and Gemini for you. These are the second and the fifth houses. Jupiter entered your Gemini fifth house in the end of May, bringing in a lot of expansion opportunities for growth when it comes to children and when it comes to um, hobbies, creative works of art, your own project at work, your own business um, or uh, children, uh, anything that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for your creative capacities. Anything that exists because of your ability to develop a vision and your skills to translate that vision into reality. You are the creator in this area of your um, of your sky. And Jupiter has been there since uh, late May, uh, bringing in a lot of development. Some end up materializing as gifts some don't but at any rate there are a lot of there's a lot of movement there and a lot of developments and opportunities um uh and some of these new hobbies for example that you're developing may have something to do with religion with philosophy with um foreign lands foreign cultures uh education as well um could be also uh, that you are developing some sort of romantic connection with uh, with a foreigner with somebody like, with a very different cultural uh, or religious background and as this is happening there these developments hit a square to saturn uh, from your second house of resources and finances this means that as you are working in as things are looking really optimistic when it comes to your own business, your own work of art, suddenly there is a financial obstacle or a financial block. Uh, it's also possible that this is a block that comes from lack of belief in your own abilities and lack of self-esteem and self-worth. That's also a possibility. Uh, it's also possible that while you are, um, let's say, uh, taking the necessary steps in order to uh, give better education to your child, suddenly you are running into some sort of prohibitive costs and they're not allowing you to uh, really do um, the thing, to, to really provide your kid with the kind of education that you want. It's also a possibility that personal finances uh, prevent you from splashing cash on hobbies and partying. Uh, you're reaching a point where let's say you you understand that you've gone a little bit overboard or you understand that uh, you really need to keep a tighter rein on your finances and you can continue to do things the way you've done it up and you've done them up until this point it's also possible that you've developed a kind of like hobby style interest in 
um, some sort of Jupiterian matter, something related to education, philosophy, religion, long distance travel, you've been signing up to one of those classes that help you, that teach you how to cook foreign food or, or how, to, how to draw paintings in the style that is very typical of that foreign country, something like that, but you're running into some sort of prohibitive costs. With Jupiter to Saturn square, there is a possibility that this growth, this moment, the forward movement that you're experiencing in your fifth house is forestalled by developments in your second house. So you're unable to, to continue as things have been up until this point. But it's also possible that, um, you know, Saturn is associated with, with the material shape of things. And so Saturn is about the moment when something materializes, but so you're kind of getting a result, their tangible result, but that is not exactly a gift that falls in your lap out unaware, but it is the result of a lot of hard work and a lot of um, postponement of immediate rewards for the sake of gaining something larger further down the line. And with the square from Saturn to Jupiter, um, there is a possibility that these developments and, and positive opportunities that are coming your way in your fifth house are Kind of materializing and come taking shape and in, in, uh, becoming kind of like tangible but as this is happening there isn't really that much of a forward opportunity in a sense you get something but that is as, as all that you're gonna get uh, kind of like from then onward the opportunity for growth kind of significantly diminishes and so um, you're seeing some sort of tangible result something is materializing uh, from all of that Jupiterian action and all of these Jupiterian positive developments, there is some sort of tangible fruit falling, uh, but you are getting that as a compensation for no further uh, growth possible. That's also a possibility. Pisces, Suns and Pisces Risings, in this video we are talking about one of the more notable transits this year and this is the Saturn-Jupiter square happening across the signs of Pisces and Gemini happening across your first and fourth houses uh, and it happens twice, first in mid-August and then again in December. Um, end of May, Jupiter entered your uh, Gemini fourth house of home, family, living situation and property. This basically means that um, ever since that happened, you have been required to pay a lot of attention to home, family, property matters. There have been a lot of developments there. There is a quite of a very active chapter happening in the life of a family member that requires you to pay more attention to them. Uh, there are more developments when it comes to property. You have finally found the property of your dreams and you are now taking all the steps and doing all the legal things and all the all the other things that you need to do in order to to really finalize the, the purchase or the sale or something uh, related to property. Uh, but at any rate, um, Family matters require a lot of your attention right now, especially because you want to remember that Jupiter is your ruling planet. Um, so you are kind of focused and kind of bogged down to deal with home, family, living situation, that kind of matters. Um, and it's mostly positive, but at a bare minimum, there are a lot of developments there. And this mid-August, um, Jupiter hits a square to Saturn in your first house, which basically means that these developments that are happening are preventing your growth in some way, shape or form. Uh, they are making you feel a little bit helpless and, and kind of um, a little bit like, oh my God, there's there's a lot of work that I need to do. And um, I kind of wanted to live more carefree, but now I have to kind of get down to serious adult matters. And um, kind of, uh, if you had plans, let's say, to focus a little bit more on your career, now these developments in, in the home and family sector are kind of preventing you from doing that, from uh, launching a bid for that very interesting project or something like that and you have it to kind of a little bit um, maybe put your career uh, on the back burner for a while in order to deal with these home and family matters. It's also a possibility and this is the, the more positive way in which this transit can play out is that um, there are developments that are happening in your uh, home and family and living situation that are prompting you to become more responsible and to be kind of like a, a more of an adult person to kind of um, 
take on a more prominent and more serious role in the family uh, in the sense that uh, right now you're kind of the person that the family has to rely on and so you are the one that has to uh, solve the problem or find a solution or something like that um, and you're called to play kind of like a more mature role um, in the family and, and kind of step up and grow um, a little bit like by one level.